all know, having seen Francis's excellent email today, today, after 26 years, is Francis's last day at the Racing Post. Uh, there has never been a, an edition of the Racing Post that did not have Francis's fingerprints all over it, that did not have at the heart of it all of the good things that Francis has done for this business. There never will be an edition of the Racing Post that does not have a, a legacy of what Francis has produced and done here uh, in, its, in its pages. Um, you know, he, it's hard to think of anybody who's been more influential at the Racing Post than Francis Kelly. Uh, I think if anybody was mad enough to have a museum uh, dedicated to the Racing Post, uh, featured in it would be Francis's ruler, Francis's checklists, and the iconic light blue shorts. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Francis has been consistent in his choice of work garb, he's been unstinting in his devotion to the Racing Post and his commitment to all of the people who work here. Uh, not only, if you look at the cards and form, the content of them, the typography in them, the kerning of them, everything about the cards and form is down to Francis. He has been responsible for the main section of the newspaper for all of those years. He has nurtured talent and has come through the department year after year. And also, he has managed editors. Editors have never managed Francis. Francis has, with, there's been a mixture of kind of resigned acquiescence to some suggestions, studied resistance to other suggestions, and occasionally Francis will think to himself, you know what, this, this guy's not a complete idiot. He might have the odd idea that's quite okay. And in that regard, Francis and I were involved in the creation of post data. But it's a measure of Francis's, both his ability and his flexibility, that not only did he do all the work creating post data, which <coughs> answered all the questions that a country should ask in, in approaching a race, but the day before it was to launch, I went to have lunch with our then non-executive director, Peter O'Sullivan, before he resigned the protest at something like printed. Um, and he, I told him all about this exciting new development, and he said it sounded jolly good. And I said, I said, it just gives you the information, there's no tip. And he said, did you have to have a tip? I said, oh, maybe you're right, maybe we do have to have a tip. So I came back and spoke to Francis. Francis, we've got to have a tip. And he said, oh, okay, right. So we, he devised the algorithm that produces the tips as the post data. And that's the sort of flexibility and ability that Francis has shown throughout his, his, his time. What's the most important important? Indeed, well, <laughs> so hold the other, so hold the other tips. Um, so I mean, Francis has been a you know a wonderful uh, colleague, friend, and mentor to so many of us. He has, as I said, been at the heart of everything that's good about the Racing Post. Um, happily, he will be staying on and doing, we hope, some uh, freelance work for us in between attendance at uh, speed lowering courses for the DBLA and people like that, and trying to keep his driving license. Um, <laughs> And you know, we're, 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 so he was not, not going to be a, a, a stranger. Um, Francis is, as you know, going to be succeeded by Craig. Uh, Craig has taken his diplomacy skills from Francis and has added a little bit of vinegar along, along the way. But uh, in order to show that that's not always the case, Craig's going to say a few words now, Craig. Yeah. I'm not going to follow that. Um, what can I say about Francis, who's uh, been in the racing game since he left university with uh, long hair, flares, albums by Led Zepp and ACDC and a degree in classics. In fact, Francis is probably the only person here that doesn't think Euripides or... What's his wife's name? <laughs> <laughs> I won't say the what? other one. Aeschylus? <laughs> Aeschylus? Uh, we'll say Homer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't the only horse that's... No. It. <laughs> it, was a, it was a funny line when I wrote it. <laughs> just, just stood here reading it. After Steve's uh, time form, where he was sacked for not bending over Reg Griffin's desk, <laughs> Labrook, the story chronicle, which was always better than the Bible, and the weekender, where he partially infuriated Robert Maxwell so much that he threw himself off a boat. <laughs> <laughs> Francis helped concede the racing post, and has been the production editor ever since, as we all know. The only piece of data that goes into the paper, as Alan says, is been down to Francis. Uh, and even after 26 years, he continues to come up with improvements. And in fact, he's left me with a list that's about five, eight, three sheets of seven point writing. <laughs> His biggest achievement probably is post data. And I think the reason he likes that is for the £100 monthly cheque that occasionally arrives every year 
uh, courtesy of that competition. Unfortunately, that hundred pounds has never been seen by anybody. He's just got <laughs> into his pocket. And he's never treated anybody. So hopefully, we'll scrap that in the new year. So <laughs> he's hoping that as part of his pension. Um, well, forgive me, I've made one or two notes, <coughs> otherwise without them I don't think I'd get through this. It's a, it's a very emotional day and I've been dreading and relishing it in equal measure. I miss the many friends I've made here over the last 25 years and the office camaraderie. But I'm looking forward to having the time to enjoy my other interests. By some definitions, uh, I'm actually the longest serving person on the racing post, only by a short head. But there are several others still around who were involved in that first edition in April 86. There's Emily Weber, that you'll know, Jim Premin, Graham Dench, Colin Russell, Howard Wright, John Randall, Adrian Cook. But the, there are two remaining members of staff only who were there for that very first edition and who were still full time in the office. One is Nigel Jones and one my very good friend, Martin. Uh, and I owe a special thanks to Andy Harrison. When we came over here in 98, it was like starting a paper all over again. And as I said once before, it's something you should never do twice in a lifetime. Um, and that's what we had to do. And now I'm leaving my duties in the good hands of Craig Fake. And I, I know he will carry the torch as well as I ever could. So thank you all very much, and I hope to see you all at the Christmas party. Thank you.
All the best for your retirement, friend. Ha, ha, ha.